All right, this is uh, Dr. Carroll, South Central Louisiana Technical College, General Chemistry. And this is uh, part four. I rarely get to four parts in a series, but I wanted to make sure this is clear. Obvious, for obvious reasons, you have uh, work that you have to do using these uh, these techniques. And so hopefully this will be helpful. Uh, the last part here we'll talk about uh, limiting reagent calculations. Alrighty, the steps are similar. Everything is identical except in this case we'll use this example aluminum plus hydrochloric acid yields aluminum chloride All right. and aluminum has a oxidation state of plus three chloride is minus one so we need three chlorides for every aluminum molecule now the question is if I have um, 15 grams of aluminum and uh, uh, let's say 80 grams sulfuric acid of hydrochloric acid how many grams of a product can I make okay so this is a limiting reagent because one of these reagents is in excess and one of them is limiting as the name implies just like the can and the bag of chips analogy we can only make as much product as we have the least amount of reactant okay and whatever reactant is in the greatest amount will be left over and hopefully it can be separated from the product in the final reaction. So first thing, balance equation. Is this balanced? Let's see, we got one aluminum, one hydrogen. Am I missing? Yeah, I'm missing the hydrogen gas. It's part of this reaction. Uh, and chloride. So chloride, I got three. I need three at least. Okay, so that means I have three hydrogens, I have only two, so I'll have to go ahead and balance that. So I'm going to add three here, that'll give me six, so I'll need to have six here, and write a six over that. Okay, so now I have six chlorides, uh, six hydrogens, I have six chlorides, only three. So I need to put a 2 there, and of course now my aluminum has gone up by 2 in the product, so I have to go up by 2 in the reactant. So there's my balanced equation. Going from grams to moles, the thing about this reaction is that it is a little tedious because we have to do our grid for both reactants. Alright, so... 8 grams of aluminum. Let's see, I'm going to need a periodic table, I believe, because what did I do with my periodic table? Uh, okay. 26.98 grams per mole of aluminum. Alright, what's the mole ratio of aluminum to our product? We have two, two moles of aluminum chloride for every two moles of aluminum. And now I need aluminum chloride, so that's 3 
times 35, I believe is as 35.45 times 3 is 106. 0.35 for the chloride and aluminum, we said it was 26.98. Um, so we add the three chlorides plus the aluminum together, we get 133.3 grams of aluminum chloride per mole of aluminum chloride and so if we did that math that's 15 times 1 times 2 times 133.33 that's 3999 divided by 26.98 times 2 times 1 is 53.96 and if we divide that 3999 by 53.96 we'll get 74.1 and technically we two significant figures is all we need uh, grams of aluminum chloride from 15 grams of aluminum. Okay, now we have to do the whole thing for the 80 grams of hydrochloric acid. So we have a lot of information already. 80 grams of HCl. 35 plus 1 is 36 grams per mole of HCl. The ratio of a product, 2 moles of aluminum chloride per 6 moles of HCl. Alright, you can see that up here, 6 moles HCl. And then we're going to convert our moles of product, grams of product, in the same way as we did before. All right, you see that, you see that. And uh, our answer here is 80 times 1 times 2 times 133 equals 21.328 divided by 36 times 6 times 1 equals 42. And so we divide 21,328 by 42. We'll get 507 grams of aluminum chloride from 80 grams of hydrochloric acid. Okay? So, how much aluminum chloride can we make? Well, it looks to me like we can only make 74.1 given the fact that we have 15 grams completely reacting of aluminum, but if we had completely reacted our hydrochloric acid, we would have 570 grams. So our limiting reagent, if we go back to our balanced equation, aluminum is our limiting reagent. Okay. Now I recommend you go through all of these steps. Let's see if I can zoom out. 
you go through all of these steps because it's not always the case that the lower amount of reactant is going to be the limiting reagent. Sometimes the higher amount of reactant is the limiting reagent. You won't know until you do a mole-mole ratio and calculate the total number of grams produced by each of the reactants. Okay, you can also have three reactants, each with a different amount of one product, or there might be two products that are asked for. But I recommend you follow these steps that were given to you throughout these four sections. First step is to balance. Second step, if necessary, is to go from grams to moles. The third step is to determine your mole ratio. Just simple from your balanced equation. And your fourth step is to convert your moles back to grams if that's what the question asks for. Okay. Um, one of the examples I gave you is simply asked for moles. And so you didn't need to go to grams. You had your answer here in moles. I'll be looking for you to read these things correctly right, and uh, put, put your correct answer uh, in uh, proper units and, and, and um, also be looking to make sure you balance your equations correctly reactions correctly and that way the rest of this will fall in line. Alright, thanks for listening. So we'll move on to lecture 10.